This is Dr. Owen Brink from Appalachian Wellness, where our specialty is you, and we'd like to give you a new tomorrow and a new you. Today, we're going to talk about visual contrast sensitivity testing, the VCS test, which is great for not only diagnosing, it's a very sensitive and specific test for SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, but it's also used as we go through the treatment regimen to monitor and quantitate the progress that's being made against this disease. The U.S. military developed a visual contrast sensitivity test, VCS test, that evaluates the function of the rod cells in the retina. The retina is the back of the eyeball. Think of the film in the camera. The rod cells are black and white receptors. They don't see color like the cones do. They only see black and white, but they're also exquisitely sensitive markers. These are the canaries in the coal mine when it comes to low oxygen delivery and poor microcirculation within the retina. This capillary level dysfunction is a key part of SIRS and can be quickly and easily checked and monitored, which is very important to routinely monitor with this simple vision test. Those afflicted with SIRS have inflammation and impaired circulation at the capillary level, causing inadequate delivery of oxygen to the mitochondria, the power plants of the cell at that level. Diffusely, this is happening all over the body, every tissue involved. So if the abnormal VCS is noted, you can bet that there's poor delivery system, not just in the retina, but all over the body. The test can not only be used in part diagnostically for SIRS, but again, it's a good prognosticator. It tells us how we're doing and what the future is going to look like as we keep doing what we're doing to manage, treat, and hopefully improve SIRS with our therapeutic endeavors. And there's some uh, references here if you want to look further. These uh, VCS testing is very re reproducible marker. I mean, it's it's accurate. You know, you can test it now and test it later, and you know, test it twice. Well, boom, boom, right in a row, and you're going to get very similar results. Okay, they're more re reproducible in their presence as a quantitative means, means not just the yes or no, but exactly how much yes or no level for those with the syndrome. Thanks to the do efforts of Dr. Shoemaker, even the timing and sequence, the sequential activation of innate immune re elements, he's been able to look at the VCS test and specific laboratory markers over time. If somebody is exposed to a bad environment, over the first day, these are the markers that will change. On the second day, the following markers will change. And on the third day, the other, these other markers will change. He's done a remarkable job of putting together the exact picture of what's going on in the body. And the VCS is a big part of it. These lab markers that I mentioned include things like reductions of the alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, MSH, that happens in the hypothalamus at the base of the brain in the pituitary. That's sort of the link between the brain and the endocrine or hormone system. Vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, is a compound that the body produces when there's low oxygen levels. This is the thing that causes more tunnels to be made, more capillaries to be put out there so that more oxygen can get to the oxygen-starved tissues. It's also used as a cancer treatment. If we can impair VEGF, so we're not getting as many new blood vessels growing within tumors, we can starve tumors of their oxygen. Dysregulation, typically, for instance, as the osmolality goes up, the ADH, antidiuretic hormone, will go up. Osmolality has to do with the amount of salts in your bloodstream. So if you're getting your blood too concentrated with too much salts, you would want the antidiuretic hormone, which causes water retention, to also rise and dilute those salts back out to the normal level. Dysregulation means that one may be going up while the other one is going down. Not a good thing. Same thing with adrenocorticotropic hormone. Usually when that goes up, the cortisol follows. Again, you get dysregulation of these and of other markers. You can get elevations in C3A, C4A. These are part of the complement system within the immune system. Transforming growth factor beta 1 tends to cause like scar tissue formation, basically, especially the lungs, the liver, and the skin. Matrix metalloproteinase 9 works to sort of cleave through tissues and allows infections to spread. Okay, so it kind of breaks down the walls in different tissues, allowing inflammation to spread throughout tissues, and those levels will go up, which is not a good thing. Leptin uh, goes up because of damage to the leptin receptors 
in the uh, hypothalamus and pituitary. Leptin is involved in regulating fat storage. So people who swear they don't eat hardly anything at all, and yet they keep gaining weight, and then you watch them, they're not eating much, they do exercise, and they're fat, and they keep gaining weight. Well, the problem there is quite likely going to be dysregulation of their leptin system. And as we treat the SIRS, the leptin levels will come down, and then the weight loss begins. And there's references for all of this as well.